Castillo, do you have any specific matchups or anything that you're looking at in this game? Well, no, not really, because I mean, there's I, I think with Richard Sherman, and obviously there's a lot been a, a lot of attention brought to him uh, because some of his uh, outbursts in the last game. But there's really not one dominant or I guess number one receiver. I think that the Broncos really utilize. Um, I think this is. The first time ever, I think they've had five receivers with, I think, t I think ten touchdowns apiece. Wow! So, you know, that's the. It's going to be hard for, I guess, Richard Sherman to kind of pick out who's their number one guy to shut down. So obviously, I think when it comes to the game time, game situations, wherever Richard Sherman is and whoever, whatever receiver goes to that side, and it depends on the the formations, whether it's three, four, five wise that that, that the Broncos use. Richard Sherman is going to probably take the better of the of those receivers, but I think collectively as a defense, that's how if they win, if the Seattle Seahawks win, that's how it's going to be won because there's again there's there's not one dominant guy. I think obviously the, you see highlights Demarius Thomas. You, you think about uh, Edelman, all these guys. These guys, there's ten guys with ten touchdowns, so you can't really say who's who's the go-to guy. Peyton Manning really is the X factor in how in the success of this of this year He's and how, ball. right and how they may win this year. But if they win the Super Bowl, it's going to be Peyton Manning as the X factor. So, so now you played in that stadium, right? Yes, Did I played. Yeah. So now, because I know that uh, they said that Eli was giving Peyton some tips and where the wind might be coming in. Where, is that is is that <laughs> oh yeah is that, is that something that's just real or are they just talking? No, no, no. I guess with the design of the, the architecture of the of the the, the field and, and the stadium. There is, you know, there are some winds swirling in certain areas of the field, so that's something to be kind of taken into effect in the play because obviously Eli plays there; he's been playing there, you know, for years now. So that's a good key. That's a key, good, definitely a good tipping point so okay. for, the, for, 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 for Peyton. Peyton. Um, but again, that's the thing; it's going to be a ground out type of game, and I think obviously, like I said, I'm predicting. You know, my prediction is. Mm, for the Seahawks to win, oh. close game. No, I predict. You know what? I predict the Broncos will win, but I want the Seahawks to win. You want to okay, why? Why do you want the Seahawks to win? I mean, I, there's. I mean, for Richard Sherman, for Richard Sherman, and, and especially for all the hoopla that has been surrounding oh, him, man. a lot of the naysayers and hate, like a lot of people want them to lose now, just because of some of the outbursts and things that happened in that last game. And I don't think that's really a reason to to, to be rooting against somebody. I mean, right. there's a lot of guys that have sh has shown their br bravado and, and just being boastful. And at the end, he wasn't bragging or anything like that. He was just, and I think it, it to, to let, to give you some insight on where Richard Sherman was coming from, to be drafted in the fifth round and you're like one of the top corners. And I, and I watched this interview with Rachel Nichols. That was almost like some disrespect and, and a slap in the face. And I think his draft, his draft status kind of dropped I think with some things that Jim Harbaugh oh, had to say right. had to say about him, right? And I think that's where all of that was coming from. It was just bottled up emotion, and for them to try to challenge him on that last play of the game, he just kind of just got got out of got, a, got out of character. Well, let me ask you this: I'm the Peyton Manning driving down the field, tie game. Don't go to Richard. Richard Sherman pick six touchdown game over. Y'all go home. Cameron in space. First thing he says what? Oh, he already said it. He's going to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to this is my thing with the whole Richard Sherman thing. It just really makes me make me mad. Just even as as a fan, is because everyone sits on the couch or watching TV in a sports bar, and you know we criticize athletes, right? Mm -hmm. Not knowing what type of mental state that you have to be in to play a brutal game like football. We got a game to where West, uh, West Walker is just going across the middle and he and the dude gets hurt. You know, you always have to be alert. And don't you have to pump yourself up, like you said, for the Super Bowl. You got to stay supremely focused to play a, a, a barbaric game, right? Man, you got to be psyched up. That adrenaline is flowing. And again, if you've never played a competitive sport, and especially a professional sport at that, I mean, even, you don't even have to be, it doesn't even have to be a professional sport. You can be playing at the YMCA. If you're right, competitive, without a, right, if you're right, competitive right, right. Exactly. you're going to be playing out of your mind. And you're going to be, sometimes you get in a zone that you don't even realize some of the things that are going on around you. So you can imagine this is a, a signature play for Richard and what's going to go down in history that propelled his team to the Super Bowl. To the Super. Somebody's worked his whole 
career for. Exactly. Right. You right, know, right, for right. me, it's a little different because I didn't grow up trying to play football or wanting to get to the Super Bowl. But for somebody like Richard that came from Compton, you know what I mean, the inner city from the hood, where guys like that have so much ability, they don't make it out. You know right. what I mean? Or they have right. that ability to make it, and it just doesn't happen. You know what I mean? They don't want to put forth the effort. They don't want to go to school. This guy not only made it out of Compton, out of the hood, right. this dude went to a, a prestigious college in Stanford, right. graduated. So this guy, it's not he's not a knucklehead. You know what I mean? He's not a hoodlum. You know what I mean? And again, Richard, you know, now people are calling him thug. You know, for him to address that and articulate how now people are saying thug, you know, because they can't say the word nigga, they want to address it as a person being a thug. But they're saying essentially the same thing. So for him to address that in an articulate manner shows you how educated he is. And it's it's not only just that the audience and the platform that he's on, it's he's on that platform for a reason. And obviously he made the outburst and it is what it is. But he's educating a lot of kids that have followed him, that, that are in Compton, that may not have a way out. Right. That right. To go to school, educate yourself. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's what he's done. And for him to be in this situation to, to make a signature play right there, a, divine, a defining play to propel his team to the Super Bowl, I mean, it's awesome. So, you know, I'm looking for not anything different from Richard. Um, again, I, he already addressed it. He probably re, he regrets, you know, how it came out. But again, he's not going to let these naysayers, you know, di distract him and take away from from his from his fire and his adrenaline and, and how he plays the game. So now, why do you say that? Hey, you, what was your scenario? You said last play last of the game, last game, tie game. No, it was for the touchdown pick okay. six. So why do you say stay away from Sherman though? I mean, do you really just want? I mean, can you really just say? I mean, say for instance, what if it is Demarius Thomas? What if it is you know? Um, That's uh, a chance you got to take. It's one of those. It's, it's one of those things like when Deion Sanders were playing. You don't really want to risk going there. Okay. But if it's the last play of the game, then you got to be you, you got to man up. You, you, Peyton Manning, he's probably if that's the case, Peyton Manning will have to man up and trust his receiver against the best corner in the league and make the best man win. Okay, I got another scenario. Donovan McNabb going up against no 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 because it's his own. Donovan McNabb going who was who was a DB then was it Ty Law who did they have over there in oh it was Samuel against me yeah Samuel I think it was Gay Samuel Gay or something okay so so if Peyton had you on the team and you was going head up against Richard Sherman should he stay away from you no because he already knows. <laughs> he already knows the type of player I am. He's going to I guarantee you, he's going to say, I'm going to give my guy who's a playmaker. I'm a proven playmaker. Right, so Demarius Thomas is a playmaker. Right, but again, again, he has ten. He has five guys with ten, ten touchdowns, touchdowns on that team. So it's not like he's... It's like he, poison. Right, exactly. Right. It's not like he's a dominant guy. And I think to his to Peyton's advantage is that he has five guys that he can go through that he's dependent on all year long. So right, 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 right. He doesn't have to go there. Right, but the disadvantage is to the defense because they don't know where the hell Peyton Manning may be going with right. that ball. Right, right.